during my father's reign in infection, he had this other guy who was HIV infected. So my dad used to tell me that we should not play around with this guy. I used to eat his food, share some jokes with him. But at the time when he told me that this guy was HIV AIDS, I had this abstinence from him. I thought he, him interacting with me would give me HIV AIDS. I didn't have the knowledge. I never knew that he was a person. I treated him as an outcast. But now that I know that HIV Zimbabwe, a former British colony in southern Africa, located between Zambia and South Africa. A country which is known for its nature and wildlife, but also for its political instability and poverty. The country is home to 15 million people, who live widely spread across the country except a few big cities like the capital Harare or Bulawayo. Since its independence in 1980, the country struggled with multiple economic and food crises. The people are poor and the inflation rate is one of the highest in the world. People are so deeply drawn into poverty that even a simple visit to the doctor is too expensive. Every year 60,000 people die due to the consequences of HIV and AIDS, which is about 20% of the total deaths in the country. 15% of the population in Zimbabwe is infected with HIV. The treatment for HIV is free but a lot of people don't take these drugs. This is mainly due to the shame or cultural reasons, because there's still a big stigma on HIV. Stigma, basically we're looking at, uh, you know, a mark of disgrace uh, that is attached to people who are living with HIV. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a mark that separates uh, people, with, people with HIV from the rest of um, other people. Uh, and discrimination basically uh, is like excluding people living with HIV from doing certain things or accessing certain services. It was long break. Uh, people, they didn't know, or general public, they didn't know much about HIV. So they were, when a pregnant mother becomes pregnant, if a woman becomes pregnant, uh, she didn't know how to do the preventive measures or whether she was HIV positive or negative. So they end up having a child who is HIV, an exposed child who is HIV positive. You um, share your food, if you share maybe toiletries, if you share uh, you know, home utensils, they still think that you are prone to uh, contracting HIV. Was a disease which can be transmitted by even touching a person. But when I grew up, I eventually became educated and I came to realize that HIV and AIDS is not all to death. So, so the main mode of transmission is through sexual intercourse. And the community or the society, they know. But due to ignorance, especially on sex, as well as teenagers, they don't want to practice safe sex. They don't want to put on condoms, but they know. So that's how it is being transmitted, and they know about it. In our culture, like here in Zimbabwe or in most parts of Africa, uh, the woman, as a woman, you don't compromise for safe sex. For example, let's say uh, me and my husband are HIV positive. We are encourage them. We encourage them to use condoms, isn't it? But the husband can say, oh, I paid Lobola for you, because if you get married, if you want to get married as a woman, in our culture. The man pays a certain amount of money and cows, then give them to the woman's parents. So it's like the man will be the boss, like I'm, to be something like I bought you. 
So they can't, we, at the end of the day, it's so said that most women, especially in rural areas or in farms, they don't compromise for sex sex. If the husband says, I, want, I don't want to use condoms, even if I am HIV positive, the woman will say, it's okay. And also, because of culture and religion, some men, they can up to have about five wives, two wives, three wives. So at the end of the day, if that man is HIV positive, it's going to affect all those wives because they want to use condom. Most Africans think that sex is for pleasure, and it this take sex as a form of entertainment. Because we do not have those entertainment things that we like theaters, studios, we do not have much of them. So they end up going um, to beer was for sex or their wives, they give her no time to rest while having sex. So when you talk of the use of herbs, some of them would just say, ah, I'm bewitched because they're in Africa and Zimbabwe. It's more of witchcraft, isn't it? So I'm bewitched, so I'm not going to take the HIV drugs or go to the hospital. They go to, to what we call Nangas or traditional healers. They go and get the treatment there. And diagnosed the treatment can be roots, can be leaves, can be whatever they can be given, but they won't, they won't work. So they will always come back at the end of the day, they come back to the hospital. But some they don't even come, they die there. So that's the main challenge we get to an adherence, even though you know there will be some other things like religion and. Use of herbs. It's just a conflict of resolution. <laughs> so, like, if the patient is HIV positive, we we'll give them drugs, as I told you before, after counseling. Then, if we we'll give them the drugs after counseling, what they do, if they have their certain belief because of knowledge deficit, they will go to the certain religion. I can't mention the name of the, the names of the religion. Yeah. But they go to the religion, then the religion leaders can even say, Oh, stop taking this HIV drugs. I'll give you this water or stones, you believe in them, then you get cured. But at the end of the day, those patients will always come back to us. But they'll come back to us in bed. Also, stigma it affects us as young people. Uh, when I want to get a scholarship or a job, sometimes it affects us because, firstly, they ask me, Are you HIV positive or HIV negative? So long we are saying I'm HIV positive, they didn't accept us as young people who are living with HIV. We are not looking at the deep-rooted mental health challenges. We are looking at the basic uh, mental health challenges that include depression, that include uh, anxiety, uh, that include stress, uh, sleeping problems, uh, eating problems, uh, to name but just a few. So this is basically what we look at. So we've got the alphabet method, A, B, C, D, E, F, um, G, and then P, M, C, T, C, and then B, M, M, T. A stands for abstinence, B stands for be faithful, C for consistent and correct use of condoms, then D is um, delay, delays sexual intercourse, E, any testing, F, faithfulness and fidelity to your partner, and it's, oh, it's free and friendly discussions about sex with your partner. 
then Jesus forget us and Like because it's being there at hospitals, being preached in the television, on social media, and also at schools. Because they, from the age of nine years onwards, in Islam, they are being taught about HIV and transmission. Circumcision is really advertised in Zimbabwe, and we uh, are encouraged. Our boys to get circumcised as well in schools, primary schools. Why? Because uh, circumcision lowers the risk of getting HIV. It doesn't prevent, but it lowers the risk of HIV, getting HIV infection. So most of the boys are being circumcised. And also, it's, it's everywhere in buses, social media. Trends always talk about get circumcised so that you can be smart, be smart and get circumcised. So we really encourage people to get circumcised so that we prefer, we lower the risk of getting HIV infection, not to prevent. Uh, I have different questions and I'm not calm. I'm, I'm proud mm -hmm. of my status. I'm proud of my status.